God. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> hey guys, Lev here from Agilite. Today we're going to be taking a look into the who, the what, and the why of the IDF's infamous MRE. So this bad baby right here is traditionally the IDF's answer to hunger. And um, let's dive right in. What's inside might surprise you. One of the startling and scary things that I see already about this particular MRE is that it says that it is kasher le Pesach, which means kosher for Passover. So this is going to uh, pose some challenges to our digestive system that we'll dive into in a minute. So obviously, simple matter, just opening it up. Oh, that's nice. There's a cute little message. It has a rainbow on it. Uh, we have a message from someone sitting at a desk packing up boxes, um, which should help us in the field. Right away, you're going to see that you have some uh, disposable cutlery. Inside of here are four MREs, which, uh, which actually means for one day. So this is, this is supposed to feed four soldiers for one whole day. As you can see, there's a bunch of cans in here, right? So you might be thinking, why are the IDF eating out of cans instead of some high-tech dehydrated food that can be reheated in its own packet and uh, will be slightly more delicious and um, a little bit more appealing? And the answer is that, in fact, the IDF does have those. The thing is, the IDF has a ton of these. They have like 15 years worth of these, and they're determined to use them up first before they switch to the high-tech meals, which means that if you're uh, in the field and you're actually going on some sort of mission, you would probably get the, the uh, fancier dehydrated ones. But if you're just training, they just give you these things, and you're supposed to stick a bunch of cans in your pack and carry them around. Um, so it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. I've eaten more of these than I would uh, care to admit, and they frankly disgust me. One of the first things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to reach in here and you're going to pull out the peanuts, all right? Now, this is great for when you're already dehydrated. You can get a little bit more dehydrated. Open these guys up, and you just pass them around. And you're going you're gonna to snack on these. To pair with the peanuts, you're going to open up a nice fruit cocktail. This one is um, just pineapple, which is fine because the real treat here is, of course, the juice that it's in. This is the modern, safe alternative to what was formerly known as avkat babak or energy powder, which is a uh, probably now banned substance, which is a um, a powder that you would mix in with water to create an energy drink. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, overzealous soldiers would be snorting that stuff. So they've since replaced it with this much safer alternative, pineapple juice. Since then, uh, friendly fire and non-friendly fire incidents have gone down significantly. Um, but the use, the use is still the same. It's just giving you that extra kick of energy. Obviously, the MRE comes with a little can opener. These guys are great. Uh, a lot of people carry an extra one of these in their kit somewhere so that you don't have to fight over the like one or two in there and you can just have someone toss you a can and get to work. First step, Poke a hole on one side, small hole on the other side. Just physics, guys. Ah, oh, that's so good. All right. Um, now, the next step is you're going to start your items that need more time. You're going to start these guys cooking. So there's a bunch of tuna in here. Would you, would you say this is unimaginative of whoever designed this MRE? Possibly. Whatever you're going to say about it, it is a good source of protein. The best thing about the tuna is that you can cook it in its own juices. So what you're going to want to do is open this and open it carefully so you don't spill out too much of the oil. Take the trash and put it back in here. And now you have one beautiful tuna. You can see it's fresh. This is sushi grade. If this was in Japan, they'd already be rolling this up into some, something tasty. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to light it on fire. First step is going to be to open up one of these guys. Yo, napkin me. Thank you. Now, you don't need a lot, all right? You actually don't want a lot. Now, you can also do this with a single square of toilet paper. Um, what's important, especially in the summer here, is that you're going to want to find a good area to do this. So I think we're actually going to do this on a rock right over there. Follow me, please. You're going to put it down. Now, you take the napkin, put it on top, just like so. Now, this basically acts as a wick. You want to give it a second. 
Then, once it's soaked up a bit, you're just gonna light it. And as soon as it catches, you can actually light it all the way around if you want. And then once the olive oil catches, it's gonna act as a wick and it's gonna become its own self-burning tuna, uh, going out in a blaze of glory, cooking itself and becoming a little bit more palatable. So we'll just let this guy go in the background and let's get back to it. One of the next things you'll pull out is something that almost no one actually carries. So this is the uh, sweet corn, of course. Corn obviously has no nutritional value. It comes out just the same way it goes in. Most people I know just chuck that and don't carry it. And in fact, you get two of them. So the, the only real thing you can do with this is bulking up the meal by adding it in with the other stuff. Some psychos will even drink the, uh, check this out, watch this. Some psychos will even drink the juice of it, right? When you run out of, uh, when you run out of pineapple juice. So, some guys just, they just like that shit. Oh, this is another good one. So this one uh, kind of competes with the peanuts for, uh, for that top snack title, right? This one requires a little bit more work to open up, right? So you're gonna have to take this guy out again and, and start. But the entertainment value offered by a jar of uh, olives, it can't be beat. I'll show you what I mean. Man, f the idea. All right, good enough. Now, here you're just gonna pour out the juice. No one's drinking this. Uh, not even, uh, n n yeah, no one's drinking this. Um, now, by the way, really easy way. If this is jammed in, you're having a hard time getting it out, just give the can a squeeze, come right out. Now, these are great because uh, as you eat them, you're left with the pit, right? You can either just have a plain old spitting contest, no explanation needed, right? All right, now we're getting into the serious stuff. This is, this is, the, this is the real deal, guys. This is, uh, this is what makes it all, it all happen. This is beans. So we got a couple different kinds of beans. We have white beans. Uh, open this please, thank you. We have red beans, and they claim to be chili beans. Thank you. Um, we have hummus beans. So these are also known as chickpeas or garbanzo beans. These are great. Um, hummus is one of the most popular meals in Israel, and these are the beans that it's made out of. So these are great really roll around nicely in the tongue. What you do is you're usually just gonna grab a handful like this, just eat those down your gullet. What you might wanna do is make some sort of a sandwich. Now, usually one of these boxes comes with a couple, a couple of loaves of sliced sandwich bread. But what I said earlier is that this is kosher for Pesach. What kosher for Passover is gonna mean in this case is that we don't have the luxury as a people of eating sandwich bread. Our forefathers fled Egypt and they didn't have time to make some sandwich bread. These guys, they took some dough, they laid it flat and they baked it. And that's why we are stuck with this atrocity that's known as matzah uh, and it's already broken. And that's just how it goes with matzah. You know, you look at it and it's broken. So this is, uh, it's actually not the matzah season. This is out of season as far as matzah goes, which means it's probably gonna be staler and shittier than usual. Um, and it's absolutely guaranteed to cause, cause a traffic jam in the small intestine. So what you're going to want to do or not want to do is open this up and then, uh, you know, you can snack on the scraps or you could take a larger piece. You can attempt to form some sort of cursed sandwich. All the drawbacks of a cracker, none of the benefits of a bread. Obviously, you can see it doesn't hold ingredients well. Um, but the Jewish people persevere. They march on. They've been through worse. And it's apparently some people's goals to make sure that they will go through worse in the future. So, you're just gonna, I'm just gonna bite into it. Second, I got some crumbs saved for later. Pass me another fork. Thanks. Um, so, an, a more appealing, perhaps, use for the matzah would be as 
a vessel for this. So this is chocolate spread. May or may not contain chocolate, definitely contains spread. So you're gonna take this chocolate spread or cacao spread. Um, and this kosher for Pesach one is uh, somehow even more disgusting than the usual one. Although some people, my fiance included, absolutely love this shit and go bananas over it and put it on the shopping list every week. Um, lick that off carefully. Now, you're gonna take a knife, right? Geologically, what you're looking at here is gonna be your upper cacao shelf, which is traditionally drier, and then your lower cacao swamp. Now, you're gonna wanna take these, mix it together until it forms a more convincing substance, and then, Here's where the real gourmet shit starts to happen, right? Now you're gonna take this beautiful matzah square, hold it like so. Now you wanna be supportive, but not too supportive with matzah because it's very easy to just destroy it. Now you're gonna take, uh, take a large knife full, start spreading, just gonna give it a nice amount. And what's nice is that the, the cracks and crevices of the matzah are really gonna hold this chocolate spread. And as we go, you don't really need to pass the halfway mark, all right? Because what you can do after is just carefully give it a little chop, fold it in half, and now you have a convincing sandwich. That's basic bitch shit, all right? That, that's really basic stuff. And frankly, as far as I'm concerned, that doesn't cut it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead, get another one of these guys set up, and now I'm gonna add the special ingredient. And that's obviously the peanuts. Now these are gonna provide a bit of crunch. Think of these as the aggregate, like the, the gravel in your concrete mix, um, cause that's how your stomach's gonna be thinking of this. Now again, hit it with that little chop, fold it, and you're good to go. So. L'chaim. I'm sure anyone who is watching this who is in the IDF is probably screaming at his fucking phone right now. He's saying, you missed out on the most important thing you can add to your peanut chocolate sandwich. And um, now that's actually pretty controversial. This is the chalva. I say controversial because Israel as a, as a whole is split into um, half the country who think that chalva is a delicious treat and half of them who think that it's disgusting and it's for old people. Um, any day now, this is probably gonna uh, devolve into a civil war. Can you explain what chalva is? Chalva is, uh, look, when, what is, what is chalva? Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> if you want something disgusting spawned out of the desert in a country uh, born from Bedouin culture and biblical suffering, you're gonna go for the chalva. So in my opinion, this is a waste of perfectly good sesame seeds, um, but some people love it. There is, there is a special way of cutting this up, of opening it. Ah, this hurts already. All right, so you're gonna peel this back. Now, um, you're gonna cut this like a pizza, all right? You're gonna take this guy, use this, to cut it a couple different directions. Now you can leverage out a chunk like this. You can eat it like so. Or um, you can put it on the sandwich. Now there's two ways to do this. One, obviously go through all the steps, spread it, put on the botnim, the, the peanuts, then put this on. Or you can just take some of this, mix it right in with your chocolate spread, Get that, get that ready for you. Mix these up as one. Um, infuriate anyone that doesn't like chalva in your unit. And then spread that on together. Let's move on. Let's check on our tuna, see if it's ready yet. Uh, what, what'll happen with it is it's actually gonna self-extinguish as it runs out of oil to burn. You can see that basically the wick we put in has absorbed and then burned all of the tuna, uh, cooked it nicely. This is actually super hot right now. We'll leave that to cool down here for a second. Let the ants feast. Let's bring this back and start using this. Woo, hot. All right, 
So, as with everything else, there's the direct approach and the indirect approach, right? One thing we can do is just take one of these cans, say this one, make a little space in there. You're gonna add in some, uh, some more beans. Now you're also obviously gonna wanna add in some more beans. And the true pros will know that the more beans, the better. Now you're gonna want, you can, you can, this is optional. You can also add in the peanuts, which gives it a little bit of crunch. And I'm sure there's some uh, health value in there. You're gonna add in a, uh, a bit of corn for flavor. And then obviously you can just go in here, get some of this juicy, crispy, savory goodness. Mm! Put that right in there. Now there's nothing stopping you from eating this as is. It's been done, I've done it, we've all done it. Uh, but any, any true pro will know that the secret to survival in the field is gonna be your sauces. So there's something called a pakal retavim, which means a uh, individual soldier's loadout, something like that, of sauces, which traditionally one soldier will carry a couple of uh, sauces. Usually it's a pizza sauce, Thousand Island sauce, and uh, sometimes something else, sometimes like uh, teriyaki or something like that. What we have here today is uh, something a little bit lighter, a little more compact, still packed with flavor. We got a couple of Tabascos, double fist some Tabasco into here. And uh, that's just gonna give it a little bit of an extra kick. And it's gonna spice things up later when this uh, finds its way all the way through the uh, digestive system. So. Now we can go ahead and give it a good stir. Get all the way to the bottom. And uh, you're gonna have some, you're gonna have some, uh, some interesting textures in here from the peanuts. A bit spicy, but certainly flavorful. The tuna adds a lot. All right, now, as I said, there's the direct approach and the indirect approach. This is obviously the direct approach. You're gonna, it's very pragmatic. You just mix it all together, eat it up. I would really only use the indirect approach if I had a good bread, a bread that could soak up some of the juices and act as a great carrying solution for it. But just for you guys, just cause I love you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and show you theoretically how you would do that with some matzah. Now, same deal. You can pre-mix it in here, or you can mix it on the matzah. Doesn't matter. The end result is the same. Hospitalization, stomach failure. Um, now you can put it like that. You can fold it, honestly. With this one, you can keep it open. Keeping it open means you can pack on some more, get right up to the edges, and then just uh, attack it from the sides. So. That corners for you. Um, normally I'd thank the TNE program, but today my stomach is the TNE program and we're testing the level of abuse that the IDF logistical system can inflict upon it. So I'd like to thank my stomach and the stomach of my friend here for uh, bearing witness to, uh, to the contents of these cans and we'll see you on the other side. And by that I mean after the bathroom. Don't forget to like, and definitely don't forget to subscribe. Eat, slave. <laughs> don't let me tell you one time. Well, there's a limit to the punishment the human body can take. <laughs> <laughs>